When you have a statistical analysis that has a between subject variable or a variable in which you have different conditions or levels um, and there are different participants in each of those levels or conditions, you usually have to check for homogeneity of variance or whether your variances are homogeneous. That word homogeneous can be broken down into two different words, homo meaning the same and genos meaning kind or type. So when you are looking for homogeneity of variance or homogeneous variances, it means that you have things that are of the same kind or they are equal. So because we always start by assuming that the null hypothesis is true, then that means that the two groups or the three groups that we have in our statistical analysis must have come from the same null hypothesis population. This means that we want to be able to assume that each of those groups has, has about the same variability in each group. So we're basically making sure that those two groups are equal before we do the analysis. That way we can assume that um, our independent variable has an effect and it's not just because the two groups started out being unequal. So when you do a test for homogeneity of variance, you start out by assuming in the null hypothesis that the groups have approximately equal variances or equal variances. Your alternative hypothesis is that the groups do not have equal variances. So this means because we want to have equal variances or to assume that we have equal variances that we do not want significance in this case. So we can interpret significance in the same way as any other test. In psychology we usually use a p-value of 0.05. So if our p-value is greater than 0.05 then we can say that the test is not significant so we fail to reject the null hypothesis and we can assume that our variances are approximately equal. If our p-value is less than 0.05, then we can say that our test was significant, so we reject the null and we cannot assume equal variances. So this assumption test comes up in many different tests, for example, the independent t-test um, and uh, ANOVA, and the practical consequences of the test change depending on which statistical test you're doing. But I'm gonna show you two examples um, using the independent samples t-test. So over here we have the results of an independent samples t-test and Levine's test for equality of variances is basically our check for homogeneity of variance. It's in these two columns. It will give us an f value and then the p-value or probability of value associated with getting an f statistic or more extreme. So in this case our p-value is greater than 0.05, which means that this test is not significant, which means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis, so we can assume that we have equal variances. So that means when we go to read our independent samples t-test, we want to use the top row and not this bottom row. In the next example, um, we have the Levine's test saying that the significance is 0 0.002, which is less than 0 0.05, which means that this test is significant. Because it's significant, we reject the null hypothesis, and this means that we can't assume that our groups have equal variances. So in this case, we would use the bottom row for our independent samples t-test and not the top row.